the whole idea of physical media versus digital is one that's been talked about, discussed, bantied about for many, many years now. The reality is physical media is disappearing. And there's two different conversations. Is physical media dying and almost dead? And should it be dying or dead? Those are two very different conversations. Uh, I myself am a digital guy. I, I, I kind of abandoned physical media a long time ago, but there are some very valid reasons why one might want to have physical media. But there's been a new breakthrough. And news of this came out a few days ago that I have to ask the question, could this little breakthrough actually cause a revitalization of physical media and maybe even save physical media? Um, because according to reports, scientists have just developed a disc that can hold 200,000 gigabytes on one disc. Oh, so this comes us from Tom's guide that write the following. We love 4K Blu-rays, but scientists are on the verge of a breakthrough for optical media. A research team from Shanghai just published a research paper on nature that explains how we can use 3D nanoscale storage to store 200 terabytes <laughs> on one disk. This is ludicrous to me. The technology uses a light-sensitive material called I sorry, AIE DDPR and two different optical lasers, one blue laser with a 480 nanometer wavelength and one orange laser with a 592 nanometer wavelength to read the data stored on the disk. Writing data to the disk requires green 515 nanometer lasers as well as 369 nanometer. Now this is where it gets interesting. While traditional storage techniques use two dimensions, the new optical technology uses three dimensions and can have up to 100 layers that could be read that equates to a 4,000-fold increase over the three-layer 100-gigabyte limit Blu-ray discs that we currently have. Put this into perspective. <clears throat> this means you could not only have a couple of episodes on a disc. You could not only have a whole season on a disc. You could literally take one disc and have an entire series. Like you like Star Trek The Next Generation? One disc. Here you go. <laughs> that, that whole thing of having to take up like buy new bookshelves and, and store 55 other discs? No worries. <laughs> one disc. Here you go. You're Rob's going to have to rebuy everything. <laughs> yeah, Rob's going to have to go out and repurchase every, oh, no. every single thing that he's got. But I mean, seriously, every once in a while, a technology comes out that like literally changes the game. This is one of those things that actually changes the whole paradigm. We're talking about one disc that can hold 200 terabytes of information. Like one of, as somebody who ditched physical media, one of the big things to me, well, a couple of the big issues to me that caused me to move away from physical media is storage space. Like it's it's literally taking up space for something that maybe I'll watch once every five to 10 years. <laughs> so storage space, the sheer number of discs and things that you have, things are going to get lost, whether, you know, you forget things that you lend to friends or in a move or you forget where you place certain things, like all that kind of stuff. If you could literally narrow, like narrow that down that for every one disc you have, that could replace 40 or 50 or 100 other discs that you have. And you and you literally can take a 700 disc collection and narrow that down to just four or five discs <laughs> that you have. Like that to me, guys, a lot of the drawbacks that I see with physical media, that addresses not all of them. But this could address a lot of those limitations and a lot of those concerns. Now, of course, it means if you break one disc, you just lost 17 That's, movies and, and five yeah. and five and entire TV series. Yeah. You Great put all team. your eggs in one basket. Yes, the, the, the drawbacks of putting all your eggs in one basket. But yeah, I mean, this is tantalizing. And, and Rob, I mean, I really got to ask you on this because as somebody who clearly loves his physical media and dare i ask how many individual blu-rays and dvd discs do you think you own 
He just added one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I probably have about 4,000. Okay. <gasps> and, so and I'm. You're talking about literally being able to reduce that to seven or eight or nine okay, discs. Okay, but that's okay. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. That, but that'll never happen because you have to think about the fact that each movie is its own business. Sure. So I, I could see, and also you would need new hardware. The real threat to physical media now is we're kind of living through this renaissance of physical media, but the problem is the players are getting sparser and sparser there's very few choices no one's making like hundred dollar blu-ray players anymore so i like there's these high-end players that are 1500 bucks if i had like an extra 4500 dollars, not that i ever will but i would buy those players and like store them where they store wine you know in a climate controlled environment so i would have players for the rest of my life so when one craps out i'll have another one to just take its place because it's it, it, that's the real thing. These new discs are going to be great for like computer centers that have massive amounts of data yeah. storage, storage backup. Yeah. Video and, and storage backups and things like that. I mean, you could literally the entire Encyclopedia Britannica or whatever. But for physical media, you know, each individual movies is like I said, it's its own business. They have to SAG needs to know how many discs you're going to sell, and so it it would it would be uh, I think valuable for an entire like how many episodes of the Simpsons could you put on a disc? That would be right. something, but they'll never, you have to have new hardware that could play those discs. Cause mm -hmm. they don't, they don't play the same way that our movie discs I mean, play. And look, John, I have, I'm under no illusions. Physical media. We probably got five years left. Maybe. I mean, PlayStation five and, and, or an Xbox X extended the life by including disc players in it. They're not going to, they don't even want you to buy games anymore. They want you no, to download. Yeah. Them. Yeah. And to your the, point, Rob, the idea of like uh, you could get a two disc box set of the entire Criterion collection, kerplunk. But I mean, like you said, how do you track that then? And you know the royalties yeah. have to go Speaking out. Speaking of, and... look, John just came in. Oh, Four, a tremendously 4K. underrated 4K. film. Mm. Just got it. Tremendously underrated film. Bring that pile. That's for you, buddy. And back on that pile. So, but I mean, to your point that you brought up, like. <laughs> In the last year or two, there have been a couple of discs that came out where, like, I remember there were all these headlines about Oppenheimer, like they ran out of stock. Well, that's because they didn't make anywhere near as many discs as they used to make because they know people don't buy them. And so they max that out. But while we have had a little bit of a, uh, of a renaissance of some discs that became popular, the past year showed that Blu-ray and DVD playing machines hardware continued to drop at an even faster rate so people who are currently physical media people they they bought a few more things in physical media but the players didn't sell so nobody bought that mm -hmm. and that becomes more and more of a problem and as these game consoles which a lot of people you saw i remember you brought up that one survey rob where that that uh, uh, a big percentage of people who still watch physical media watch them through their game systems. And yeah. we're seeing a transition. The game systems are, are even like phasing out the physical media. Like to me, I mean, Rob, you're right. They, they still have to sell them as individual discs. But I mean, somebody like me, if I was going to readopt physical, the idea that I could still buy an individual disc, but not have to keep it, I could buy right. that individual disc, <laughs> put it into my computer and immediately transfer it onto my God master 200 terabyte disc. And I could just keep everything on that. I, I tell you what guys, for somebody like me, who's been an ardent, I don't use physical media anymore guy. That becomes kind of appealing guys. We want to thank a sponsor of today's video. Better help. Guys, it's a brand new year and a lot of people are making New Year's resolutions. You know, things they want to change about themselves. But I've always believed that it's also equally as important to identify the things we're doing well and building on those. And therapy helps you find your strengths so you can ditch the extreme resolutions and make changes that really stick. I've always believed that nothing impacts our daily performance in our jobs, our hobbies, our relationships, like our mental health. And I've also said for a long time that it's about time that we stop just putting emphasis 
on improving our physical health by getting out to the gym, but also by putting emphasis on improving our mental health as well. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you gotta do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. So guys, celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit betterhelp.com slash campia today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash campia. Chris, I, I don't know how many discs you and Logan have laying around the house, but I mean, is is something like this, like a, a single <gasps> disc that could literally hold like 4,000 other discs, does that become appealing to you? Do you think it's going to move the needle for anybody else? What do you think? So going into this topic, seeing this email today, I went, oh, I don't want to do this because I'm going to hurt Rob's heart. No, 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 um, it's okay. <laughs> so I, I actually, I moved my discs today because you guys know I'm moving right now and I'm doing the slow crawl. And I have very, very, very special, special media, right? Of like Lord of the Rings, the special editions that are in those beautiful box sets and everything. My steel book from Nickelodeon of Avatar, those kinds of things. It's very limited though. I maybe have 30 physical pieces of physical media still in that kind of way. The rest of them, I keep in my early aughts CD binder, just in the <laughs> sleeve. You're not the only one. Okay. Is this 1997? I'm so sorry about it. I'm so sorry about that. Oh, do I have reactions turned on? Oh my gosh. Um, but so I, I have a very limited space and that's how I carry things. I don't know if this would change the or move the needle for me aside from having a storage unit for for those other ones that I keep in that binder. I just keep coming back to, yeah, like Rob said, residuals are going to be an issue. How do you track that kind of thing? How do you track these DVD sales or these Blu-ray sales? And then the other thing is, how do you fight instant gratification? And by that, I bring up a John Mulaney bit. Mm, he watches this movie that's on television when he owns it on DVD. Mm. People just always do that. Oh, you own this. Why are you watching on Netflix? Oh, well, this is easier. Rob's That's talked. Rob's done habit. that. Rob was talking about that. I think just a couple of weeks ago that he right. he was like, this movie came on TV, so I sat and watched it, even though I have five copies of it over on the shelf. Exactly. See, you, I, it, it's hard to fight that instant gratification, even when it comes to buying physical media. I can get it in two days from Amazon or less, but I can download it right now and have it in my virtual library this instant. Well, I think the real the real fear that I have when it comes to things like physical media is because everything is analytics driven you're going to end up with the top 5% of what people watch. And then the rest of the 95% yeah. of yep. cinema history is going to fall by the way. So I'll give you an example, a company called vinegar syndrome released despite the name, uh, a, a movie That's called a, great name. a movie called sex mission Ooh. and sex mission is not, it's, it's a science fiction oh, film. It's a science. It's not about that, but, that but I saw this movie at a film festival in 1984 and I had was never able to see it again. It's a Polish, it's an Eastern Bloc science fiction film. And they recently released it and I picked it up. And there was no possible way that I would ever get to see this movie again, this science fiction film again, and about these guys that wake up in the future. And I wanted to see it. And no one's ever going to put it on a streaming service. And if they did put it on a streaming service, very few people would watch it in the first place because they don't even know what it is. And it's Polish and it's from the 80s. And so the problem is, that movie will eventually be gone from human consciousness. And that's why I collect physical media is because I have sex mission. I own it. I might only watch it one more time before I pass off this mortal coil. But one I last mission. On shelf. One, one last, last mission. mission. One, one I last do. Last. I love the idea of Rob having a cellar that he goes into and he like blows the dust off of a PS5 and it's like, ah, a 2024 vintage. Mm. <laughs> and he looks in this disc in there. It's going to be magical. It's going to be a lovely I, thing for you. I'm curious because Jonathan, there it is. Jonathan, <laughs> you're you're the only one here who's got, you know, who's got kids. I and I I, and I, I this is not a facetious question. I don't know the answer to this question. I'm really All really right. curious. When is the last time you remember one of your kids buying a DVD or a Blu-ray? Uh, Never. I mean, <laughs> Isabel would be the only one that does that because she's got, she's kind of like Rob. She loves physical media and she loves collecting. So she'll buy vinyl and she kind of gets that from me. So, but that is not the rule. That's the exception. The other two never, literally never. Literally yeah. never. Yeah. It's, it's an interesting thing. And I'm, listen, I'm the hardcore 
I ditched physical media ages ago, but I got to say to me, a disc that could hold 200 terabytes. But see, this is <clears throat> that becomes uh, tempting to me. That's tempting. At this point, though, with this technology, if it, it develops where it's on a market, even on a corporate level, there's no excuse for uh, for studios not to be backing up. I, I don't want to hear any more about these movies that are rotting. Their 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 you know their cellulose is rotting somewhere in the, the salt shelf. caves. I don't. Yeah. I don't yeah. the, everything needs to be backed up from now on yeah. by these corporations. But All right, the guys. problem is they don't want to spend the money. Yeah. Well, yeah, guys. The question is for you. What do you think about this? If you're like me, and there are many people like me who kind of ditched on physical media, but does the concept of having a piece of physical media that can hold infinitely more than what the old stuff, would that move the needle for you at all? Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called the John Campy Show podcast available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.